Hey everybody, I'm gonna show you how you guys can use Builder Metrics, which is our Uniswap V3 fee calculator to actually optimize your yield through Uniswap V3 and create different strategies before you even enter into the positions. Let's hop in. So on the homepage, you pretty much have two options when you wanna get straight into calculating or finding different pools. You can head over to the calculate option, which is gonna take you over to the Uniswap V3 calculator. Here, you're able to select the network, the tokens, as well as the fee tier, or if you're not sure and don't have a pool in mind quite yet, you can head over to the pools section and view the top Uniswap V3 pools. Now, obviously you're gonna be greeted with a lot of different metrics. That's why our name is Builder Metrics. When you land on this top Uniswap V3 pool page, you'll be able to see the risk level, which is based on a few different factors. You'll be able to see the price volatility for the past 24 hours, but using 14 days worth of data. You'll be able to see TVL, 24 hour volume and 24 hour fees. And then if you found a pool that you're ready to invest into, you can just simply head over to the action section and click calculate and it will go ahead and pull it up on the calculator. Now in this case, I'm gonna head back over to the calculate tab and I'm simply gonna select the Ethereum network or if I wanted to go to their Arbitrum, I could go over there as well. But in this case, we're gonna be using Ethereum. For my pair, I'm gonna simply select Ethereum to USDC. This is a pool that I like to provide liquidity for a lot. And most of the time I'm providing on the 0.05% fee tier. We'll hit calculate just like that. It'll go ahead and load up and load all the data. It might take a few seconds. And then once it loads up, you'll be greeted with a variety of different tools to estimate and simulate this pool. And just like that, the page is now loaded up. We have a few options at the top. The first thing we're gonna see is the pool, which is Ethereum to USDC. Now, something that I wanna mention is Ethereum is the base asset and USDC is the quote asset. That means that we are essentially looking at this pool in terms of dollar value because one USDC is worth $1, it's a stable coin. Whereas if we have, let's just say, Ethereum to wrap Bitcoin, then wrap Bitcoin is gonna be the quote asset, meaning that we're gonna be looking at things in terms of wrap Bitcoin. But with that being said, you're also gonna see information like the fee tier as well as Ethereum. If you wanna head over to Aperture to open this position, you can click automate on Aperture. That'll take you over to one of our partners, which is a composable automation platform. Toggle pair is simply going to switch the base and the quote assets. So if we hit toggle pair, it's now gonna put it in terms of USDC being the base asset and Ethereum being the quote asset. In this case, it's a lot easier to use USDC as quote, so let's go ahead and use that. And then of course, if you want to go back and select a different pool, you can click change pool. It will automatically load all the parameters you currently have, and then you could go from here and select Ethereum to USDT or so on and so forth. In this case, we're just gonna keep it on Ethereum to USDC. Now, next thing that you're gonna see is an info bar with a ton of different information about the pool, including the TVL, the average price volatility for the past 24 hours, the volume to TVL ratio, as well as the fees to TVL ratio. You can also see the average 24 hour volume and the average 24 hour fees and the risk parameter as well. Now, with that being said, all of this information is based off your calculation range. And basically what that calculation range does is it factors in X amount of days, X being whatever you set your calculation range to. So if we use, let's just say one day's worth of data, then it's gonna go ahead and refresh this information up here. In this case, we're only using the past day to calculate all of these different metrics. Because remember, this is a calculator that uses historical data to predict what your rate or what your APR or what your position will do in the future. So if we use, let's just say 90 days worth of data, we're probably gonna get a more accurate estimate because of course it is using a longer time frame, and things have gone up and things have gone down in the past 90 days. Now, while we're on this box, I do wanna go ahead and go into a little bit more detail on the min price, max price, and current price. The current price is adjustable, so you can set it to anything that you want. So that way you can predict different deposit amounts at specific prices or whatever it may be. I do recommend keeping the current price at what the current price of the pool is. In this case, it's 1640.8. And then min price and max price, this is gonna be your range. In this pool, I might use a range of something like 1500 to 1825. And it's showing me over here how much of each asset I'm going to deposit. But let's just say I'm gonna be using $10,000 or even $15,000. I can adjust this deposit amount to see how much USDC I need and how much Ethereum I need. It will also show you the ratio. So in this case, it's about 46% USDC and 54% Ethereum. And when we're ready, we can hit create position. It will take us over to Uniswap to add our liquidity to this pool. And of course, on the left, this is where we're gonna find our estimates on how much we could potentially be making. And I wanna mention that this factors in the current price, the min price, the max price, the liquidity distribution over here, as well as current TVL and fees that are being collected. So in this case, this pool is estimated to do about 32% APR, 
which off a $15,000 deposit would be about $13 per day. Remember, these are estimates, so take them with a grain of salt. And if you wish to calculate in permanent loss and see how your position will perform when the price goes down, you can hit the calculate in permanent loss button. So in this case, if Ethereum price goes down to $1,500, we are going to have about 2.18% of impermanent loss, which is equivalent to $311. Now in our pool, we have $13,985. But if we were to hold our initial assets, which would have been that 46% USDC and that 54% Ethereum, we would have had $14,296. So obviously the HODL beats this. This. But in the case that we have, let's just say 24 days worth of fees that we collected, we break even with impermanent loss. The next thing I want to talk about is liquidity distribution. Since we have a ton of different people and liquidity providers concentrating their liquidity, obviously some price points are going to have more liquidity than others. This is just showing the liquidity distribution on different price points. So as you can see on these current price points, there's a lot of liquidity, whereas over here on the outliers, there is barely any liquidity because there's not a lot of people providing full range liquidity compared to the actual concentrated amount. Now the correlation chart is going to be the correlation between the base and the quote asset. In this case, we're using Ethereum to USDC. So this is the chart for Ethereum price in terms of USDC, basically meaning how many USDC tokens or how much of the quote asset it takes to equal one of the base asset or one Ethereum. And down here on the bottom, you will see the min price for the period that is displayed in the chart. Same with the max price. You'll also see the current price, which is 1640.873 and the average price of this pool. Another thing I will mention is if you drag this calculation range out to let's just say 176 days and you reload the chart, it will now show more days worth of data. 176 days to be exact. This is ultimately perfect for when you're trying to analyze short term versus long term strategies. If we're looking at seven days, as you can see, we have just seven days right here and our pool would have been in range. Whereas if we drag it out to 320 days, our pool still would have been in range with this range. But obviously, this is something like 1100 to 2100. So it's pretty broad. Now the position breakdown chart has two variations. One is token and one is value. The first one I want to take a look at is token. This is going to show you exactly how much of each token you're going to have as the price of the pool starts to move. So currently the price of the pool is roughly 1657 USDC. If the price goes to 2001 USDC, we will now have 0.76 Ethereum and 14.238 USDC. If it goes all the way to 28.87, we will now have 15,819 USDC. Whereas if it goes over to, let's just say 541 USDC per Ethereum, we will now have 10.37 Ethereum. So this will show you how your assets are shifted over time so you can pre-plan what you're gonna do when it hits specific price points. Additionally, if you hit the arrow, you can look at the position breakdown by value chart. And this is a very, very similar chart. It shows you exactly how your position is gonna perform over specific price points. But instead of showing you how much of each asset you have in terms of the actual amount of asset, it's gonna show you how much of each asset you have in terms of the quote asset. So in this example, at the price point of 623 USDC per Ethereum, we are gonna have 6,469 USDC tokens worth of Ethereum. So I know that's a little bit tricky. And in this case, it's gonna be $6,469 worth, assuming USDC does stay the same price as $1. But in the case of Ethereum to wrap Bitcoin or even Matic to Ethereum, it's going to be different. We'll take a look at an example later on. And the asset value chart is gonna be very similar to position breakdown by value. It's just gonna show you how much your total LP value is over specific price points in terms of the quote asset. And then TVL history is obviously pretty self-explanatory. It is gonna show you how much TVL there is over specific price points. So you can see in this case scenario over the past 320 days, we've seen an incline in TVL. More people have provided liquidity. And then with volume history, you can see that we've actually seen a very, very, very slight decline in volume. And one day there was actually a huge spike of volume where we had about $3.45 billion of volume for this pool. And of course, if you're not sure what to do, you can go and take a look at a few other people that are providing liquidity. In this case, it's showing positions that have been open for longer than an hour and have assets above $500. For example, this person's doing a 386% fee APR. And if we look at their price range, they have a lower range of 1613 and an upper range of 1657, but this has only been open for four hours. If we wanna look further into this position, we can hit apply 
and it will go ahead and apply that exact range. As you can see, this person is very, very concentrated. And if we really want to, we can look at positions that are doing the best possible yield. In this case, the position that we literally just looked at is the one that's doing the best out of all liquidity positions. We go down a little bit further. This person has had theirs open for a day. They have a little bit broader of a range of 1556 to a 1657. And with the calculation range of 318 days, that was estimated to do 165%. Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you guys how to do in this video is simply look at at pairs where it's not with a stable coin. It's a volatile, volatile asset instead of a volatile stable coin asset. In this case, we'll use Ethereum and wrap Bitcoin. Now, as you can see, our current pool is ETH slash WBTC. That means our base asset is Ethereum and our quote asset is WBTC. So in this case, we're seeing prices like 0 0.059. This is a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna hit toggle pair. So that way I can look at it in full numbers, how many Ethereum it takes to equal one wrap Bitcoin as opposed to how many one wrap Bitcoin it takes to equal one Ethereum. I'm gonna use a calculation range of 90 days. For my min price, we'll just do something like 15.5 and for my max price, I'll probably do something like 17. But basically this is saying our min price is when it takes 15.5 Ethereum to equal one wrapped Bitcoin. And our max price is when it takes 17 Ethereum to equal one wrapped Bitcoin. I know it's a little bit tricky to understand, but we're going to be making a video on how you can understand base versus quote assets. So make sure to drop a like and subscribe when notifications turned on. Everything is gonna be the exact same it's just it's going to be a little bit harder to read the position breakdown by value in the asset value chart so first things first we'll look at the position breakdown chart by token in this case you can see our price is 6.21 ethereum or over here it's 26.49 ethereum that means that it takes 26.49 ethereum to equal that one wrap bitcoin so in this example over here when wrap bitcoin outperforms ethereum we have full ethereum whereas over here when ethereum outperforms wrap bitcoin we have full ethereum Wrap Bitcoin. And one thing I will mention is when the chart's going down, like over here in this little stretch, that means that the quote asset is doing better because it takes less of the quote asset to equal one of the base asset. Whereas when the chart is going up like this little stretch right here, that means that the base asset is doing better than the quote asset. So in this example, wrap Bitcoin would have been doing better than Ethereum in this stretch. Now, when we look at position breakdown by value, it's going to be very similar. It's just we don't have USDC. So as you can see over here, we have 4.72 Ethereum worth of wrapped Bitcoin at the price of 8.34 Ethereum. And then same thing with asset value. It's going to show us our overall LP value in terms of how many Ethereum we have at specific price points. So this is perfect when you're creating advanced like dollar cost averaging or options like strategies. Remember, you guys can check out Builder Metrics at buildermetrics.com. The link will also be down below in the description. Drop a like if this helped you and subscribe for future videos.